In the second term in unit 1 we have a wonderful lesson which talks about the emotions of a person who was differently abled. She became a legend and a visionary. It is followed by a beautiful poem written by Deepti who had become blind at an early age of one and a half years. Now let's go on to this prose lesson, The Mystery of Language. This is a short biography of Helen Keller and it's in the form of a dialogue between a student and a teacher. Have you heard about her before? Helen Keller was born 150 years ago in a small town in Alabama, USA. Her name is Helen Keller. When Helen was one and a half years old, she became seriously ill and lost her ability to hear and see. Till she was six, Helen spoke through simple signs and actions. For simple words like yes, no, mother, come and go. When she died at the age of 87, she had written many books and won many awards and films had been made about her life and work. Now read on to know more about this remarkable person. Student Teacher, if she could only communicate through science, how did she write a book? Teacher I will tell you her story. Student Thank you teacher. Teacher when Helen was one and a half years old, she lost the ability to see and hear. It became more and more difficult for her to share what she wanted to say because her mind was racing ahead. Despite this, she learned to do some chores at home like folding her clothes and putting them away. What did Helen's parents do? Helen's parents realized that she needed a person who could teach her to communicate with people. So they took her to Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone. He had also discovered ways of helping children who found it difficult to hear. His wife Mabel had lost her hearing at an early age due to fever. He suggested that they write to the Perkins School. What do they do at Perkins School? Perkins School was established nearly 200 years ago and it serves people who have problems with their vision. Helen's mother, Kate, wrote to the head of Perkins School to ask for a teacher and they sent her their star student, Anne Sullivan. The day she arrived, Helen's life began to change. What did Anne Sullivan do? Anne was 21 when she came to teach Helen. She found a way to make Helen understand words and their meanings. She began to teach Helen letters by writing them on her palm. Wasn't that difficult? It was difficult at first. Then something happened that made Helen's learning much faster. She learned the word water. Let us hear about this in Helen's own words. Someone was drawing water and my teacher placed my hand under the spout. As a stream gushed over one hand, she spelled into the other the word water. First slowly then rapidly. I stood still, my whole attention fixed. Suddenly, I felt a thrill. And somehow, the mystery of language was revealed to me. Do you know, Helen learnt 30 new words on that day? Quickly, she learnt words and then sentences. What a wonderful teacher! Yes, Helen's teacher wanted her to explore the world around her 
to ask questions and to experience nature. Helen loved to smell and touch flowers to respond to nature. She was a learner till the end of her life. She knew three other languages, knew how to play chess and even ride a horse. Did Helen go to college? Helen was the first person among those who could not hear or see to graduate with distinction from any college. While she was at Radcliffe College, she wrote her first book, The Story of My Life, that has been translated into 50 languages. This is so wonderful to hear. What else did she do? She was a visionary and a pioneer helping to make the world a better place for differently abled people, particularly children. Later on in her long life, Helen concerned herself with the needs and rights of the unemployed and the poor as well. She went on many lecture tours with her teacher and even acted in a film. Really? She acted in a film? Yes, many films and plays have been made about her and her amazing teacher. I wish I could meet her. That is a nice thought, but Helen Keller died peacefully in her sleep in 1968. She was 87 years old, but her mission lives on to inspire and guide each one of us in our journey into love and acceptance of diverse abilities among people and in the world around us. Now dear children, I am sure this story has really inspired you. This is not a story, this is a biography. Do you know what a biography means? Biography is all details about a person and what he had achieved in his life. And autobiography is a person writing about oneself or herself or himself and his life or her life. Now this biography, we learn that this person amidst all her trials and uh, troubles, she has come up in life and not only existed, she lived for the good of others. Here we find a few um, incidences that really made her into a very, very meaningful person in others' life. Now see how Anne Sullivan, she was the star student. Star student means the best student in Perkins School of uh, Children and she just came and made this Anne Sullivan made the life of Helen Keller so very beautiful, so very meaningful. She was the one who inspired her to be of use to others. You can just imagine if, you're, if you don't have the ability to see, you feel that the whole world is lost. Nothing you can enjoy around you. But this person, she was not only visually challenged, but she was also uh, she also had the problem to speak and hear and with all these difficulties and problems this person has come up to a life of an award winner and also an actress and also she has been a teacher in teaching and giving lectures to so many students. Now here we find a small little poem that was written by Helen Keller, read and enjoy. They took away what should have been my eyes, but I remembered Milton's paradise. They took away what should have been my ears, Beethoven came and wiped away my tears. They took away what should have been my tongue, but I had talked with God when I was young. He would not let him take away my soul, possessing that, I still possess the whole. Now dear children, you just tell me who John Milton was, do you know about him? John Milton was a very great poet and writer. 
and he became visually challenged a visually challenged person at the age of around 35 to 40 and then he started asking God why has this happened to me if you see his poem honest blindness you can feel the intensity of his feelings that he has poured out in this poem but later on he went on to take it as a challenge and he wrote even two great epics Paradise Lost and Paradise Regained. So she remembers John Milton's problem and she says her problem is nothing. Next she goes on to talk about Beethoven. I'm sure you know about Beethoven. Beethoven was a very great musician. He was deaf and dumb. That is he could not speak. He could not hear. And then when he played music, when he composed music, people started praising him, complimenting him and even today his music lives. Such a great personality Beethoven was and that made Helen Keller take up her challenge as nothing at all. She goes on to say, even if she is not able to speak, God has given her a mind to pray. So she has been talking with God, though she could not speak to anyone. She has been talking to God and she goes on to say further that her soul can never be taken away from her because she has the willpower to strive against all odds and come out as a successful person. So in spite of her disabilities, not to see, not to hear or not to speak, she says that she has a soul and a mind and a willpower to go on with whatever she has to do. Now let us look at the vocabulary here on page 55 uh, we have a few words um, and we have uh, some pictures also. There is a beautiful quote on top, the most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched but just felt in the heart. I think this quote will go along with that short little poem that she has written. So whatever beautiful things are around us, it need not be seen. It's not necessary that we should see or hear the sounds, but we can feel it in our heart. Okay, now the new words that you are going to learn. Remarkable, which means great. Chores, regular work or regular tasks. Spout, piece or a tube on a container rapidly, very quickly, mystery, strange and interesting and explore to examine something completely. The next page also you have a few vocabulary items. Visionary, a person who plans the future that is one who works very hard to plan it out. Okay, You should have a vision for the future. future. So such a person is called a vision, visionary. Pioneer, a person who is the first to study and develop a particular area of knowledge. A pioneer is, person, is a person who plans out and he finds out something new and he gives to the world a new field of study. Okay, next one, unemployed, jobless. Diverse, different, acceptance, the act of agreeing. And you can also find some pictures in your textbook. Uh, the statue of young Helen Keller learning the mystery of language. And uh, here is the water pump where Anne Sullivan put her hand under the spout and made the water fall on her hand. And on the other hand when the water was felt by Helen Keller, on the other hand, she wrote the word W-A-T-E-R first very slowly and then rapidly. Rapidly means very fast. So, Helen Keller could get it in her mind. Okay, so this word means what I am feeling now, water. So, same way, she made her feel things and also wrote on the other hand what that word was. So, that day itself, she has learnt 30 new words. A very very fast learner I am sure. 
and today I gave you some 10 words, 11 words I just read out from the textbook. I am sure you have read the, uh, you will be able to read these words once again and keep it in mind and use it further for your other essays and answers.